Hi there, welcome to Boxing Deep Dive. I'm Lyndon Hosking and great to have you along for another episode of Dream Fights. And uh, we've got another ripper in store for you in this episode. Uh, without further ado, I'll bring in my co-host, Grant Tazzy Brown and Peter Matiatis. How are we, guys? Good, thanks, Lyndon. Great to be on, guys. Yeah, well, uh, last week's Tazzy, I think that was at your one, Zarate and Olivares. Yeah, it was. What, what was the, the voting? Well, funny you should say that because it was very, very close right up to the last bit and we had a dead heat. 50-50. That's a pretty cool. Yeah, 50-50. It, it, it was up and down. Look, we didn't have a massive amount of votes, not nowhere near what we normally get. And that's probably understandable because it's probably one for the real boxing purists out there. Um, no, we knew what 50 we 50 is a good yeah. that's a good call well Zarate was was um, at the start he pulled away and then Olivares sort of pulled him back so look it was nowhere near what we got for say a Leonard De La Hoya vote but um, mm-hmm. but still um, there was a lot of yeah uh, boxing purists out there that, that absolutely loved it and well that's what I wanted was... I wanted to test the purists mm-hmm. and I wanted to educate the new the newbies to the sport yep yeah yeah, no, I, I loved it. I thought it was a great pick. And, um, you know, and look, it probably was, wouldn't be one that, that would spring <clears> to mind straight away, Pete. But when Tazzy said it, I thought that, that it was, would be an absolute ripper. And the ones yeah. that actually commented on it online were like, hey, well done, boys. That, that's, a, that's a great fight. Pete, no, no, sorry, yep. <laughs> great pick. No, I was going to say, I was waiting. All right, that's no, all, great that's pick. Okay. And, and yep. uh, Pete, no one Pete's still a bit dusty, Lyndon. He had a big, a big, big, a big week. week last <laughs> week. Another big show. And... He's um he's obviously just recovering. Yeah, well, he's definitely had a big week. And next week's going to be bigger, boys, because we've got our fourth member back. Mike Altamira is back from um, Africa or wherever he's been. So I'm really looking forward to having him. I actually like him in these episodes because he's so... Uh, and the classic fights, of course, because he's he's like the wa- walking encyclopedia, as we always say. And uh, his input is... Um, it's like talking to a boxing professor sometimes, isn't it? So it's, uh, it's, it's great to have him back. Yeah, he's just a better-looking version of me, really. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it, guys, because tonight it was my, or in this episode, I was going to say it was mine, but it was actually a um, an Instagram follower named Nathan Mitchell who's put a few fights out there. He actually wanted uh, Chiro Gatti against Costa Zoo, but I'm sorry, Nathan, we had to put the line through that because it would be entertaining, but it would be, in our opinion, it would be very, very one-sided. So I'm sorry we've had to put the red marker. Costa, Costa smashes Gaddy. Yeah. Be entertaining, though. Gaddy wouldn't go down soft, um, easily. But we think this fight is a hell of a lot better, Pete. And it is Canelo Alvarez up against the hitman, Thomas Hearn. You can see there, we've made it 12 rounds for the world's super welterweight title. We know these guys have fluctuated a lot over their careers, but we're going to make this for the super welterweight title. So 154 pounds. The home of boxing, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, USA. So, Pete, first thoughts. What are you thinking? With Obviously, without giving the uh, result away. No, I'm just thinking, what a great matchup. Yep. How much? How many pay-per-views will that get with the American public and the Mexicans? It'll go off the charts in yeah, today's, be, yeah, be fair in today's market. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, the Hitman 5 Division World Champion. Um, just... You know, at six foot one, how, how did he ever make world away? But this is a junior middle. And um, how exciting the first few rounds would be. Because Thomas Hearns, he'd, he'd come out smoking the first few rounds at Canelo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it'd just be one of those real intriguing fights for mine. Well, Tazzy, you're a, you're a Hitman fan. Um, what, what were the thoughts that, that come to mind when you, when you think of this fight? Which, which would have been just a, a magical fight. Yeah, look, uh, overall boxing history, I'm a Hitman fan. I love yeah. Tommy. Current, I love Canelo. Mm. Canelo's my favourite current fighter. But, look, yeah, Tommy, I mean, you know, look, yeah, we won't go into pick yeah. shit now. But, like, yeah, look, I mean, look, they both got, they both fought the best in the era. Um, but at light middleweight, as Tommy's probably best division, I think, Going on what he'd done a lot middleweight, even though it was only a short stint, I think he's probably the best light middleweight of all time. Yeah, but I he mean, was a, um, he was a wrecking ball, Canelo, wasn't he? Canelo in recent, recent arguments, mm. um, yeah, he deserves to be mentioned. Canelo, yeah. Canelo's, I think, done, done things, you know, that he could probably, he's earned the right to be mentioned in any era now, which is massive. Mm. Yeah. Um, 
But look, mate, yeah, it's a great, you know, we're into, you know, this is a fantasy fight, so we're into a, it's a dream fight. It's, what it's about, and this is a good, a good, a good pick, mate, you know mm. what I mean? And uh, Canelo's the current king, and Tommy was a bad man. A lot of people have said the Mexicans and all that support it. Mate, the whole, the whole Detroit followed Tommy Hearns. When Tommy Hearns fought Ray Leonard the first time, they sold their houses. Mm. They, sold, they, they It was a, the, a bad move. But they were so confident, they went to Vegas and hey, they went and had lost their homes because they all better than Tommy. Yeah. He was very much loved in Detroit, the Motor City Cobra. Well, we've had both of these boys on before. We'll go to firstly Canelo. Um, Canelo, uh, we had him against, I think, Marvin Hagler um, a, a few episodes ago. So he's, he's no stranger to dream fights. You can see there, 57, 1 and 2, 39 KOs and climbing. And just look at all those belts. There's 12 different world titles there. So an unbelievable effort. We won't go through them all, but ranging from super world weight right up to light heavyweight. So what a uh, champion this guy is, is turning out to be, Pete. I mean, he's only, you know, he's probably still got three or four or five good years left in him. He has. He could possibly go down as the highest money earner in the history of the sport, mm. I believe. He's just got that. That appeal, and um, you know, he can go up in weight, he can go down in weight. He just, for a guy that's five foot eight, mm -hmm. yeah, to you know, to be ruling at light heavyweight, it's a massive effort. Yeah. Starting from welterweight, moving to light heavy, and still being able to bully opponents around. He's just got high boxing IQ, very good power, tough as nails. Just a a, a typical Mexican boxer, but he's just got that much flair. He's got everything you'd want in a fighter. Turn professional at fifteen. You know he's serious when you turn professional at 15. Yeah. He just look like a, a little kid too. But um, Tazzy, he just, he's just got everything, hasn't he? Obviously, he can fight, but he's got the appeal. And the Mexican people, you would never think they could love anyone more than the Chavezes and um, Zarates and all these types of fighters of the world. I mean, Marquezes and the list just goes on and on and on. But I think he'd, you'd have to say he's the most loved, loved Mexican Pretty much of all time at the moment, isn't he? Really? No, nah, I, I wouldn't say. Who would you put above him? I, no, I don't. I wouldn't say that he's done Chavez. Like, I don't think they love him like they did Chavez. To be honest with you. Okay. I, I yeah. Really don't. Okay. I, 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 I love Canelo. I don't think his style, because he can box a bit, is like as Mexican as they want. They want and Chavez was always in wars and yeah, you know, Canelo's awesome. I just don't think anyone will ever replace okay. Chavez. I think Marquez. Well, I think Canelo's out there, Marquez and Pereira mm. and Morales. Yeah. Um, I wasn't... It's a bit going back for me about all the Maris. I, I'm sure he was loved Gerardo, but I think I don't think anyone will, will do Chavez, that's to be honest. Mm. But, look, he's done amazing. He's just got better and better. We've mm. seen him from the fights of Trout and Lara where he had some troubles. Obviously, Floyd was just a master and... Mm. We can say Canelo was too young, but I mean, look, you know, too young, too old. Floyd's a school, but that's Floyd. Mm. But then he went on the Triple G fights. First one was controversial. Second one, I thought he won it, fair and square. Mm. Um, and he went on went on from there and there, and, and look who he's beaten since. I mean, he's, um, he's beaten young guys. He's beaten guys that are heavier. He's beaten guys in their prime. I think that um, I believe he beats Bivlov. I believe he beats Triple G in a rematch. I believe he can even beat Better Diaz, who's the monster in the line. He won't division. I think he's that calculated, picks his shots, has a good presence about him, pressure-wise, in front of you, but he's not exerting too much. He's got a chin, IQ. I just think he's a ring general. I think he beats everyone up to low heavyweight. Cruiserweight is a bit big and heavyweight. I think I think he's he's no doubt he's the best pound for pound. Yeah, you know Crawford, Usyk, Inouye, all around there. But no one's done what Canelo's done. It's mm. it's so far in between one and two, in my opinion, on resumes. Yeah, on resumes. What, what do you think, Pete? Do you agree with that? That um, he'll struggle to surpass Chavez. I mean, we all love Chavez. He's, he's my, one of my favourite fighters of all time. But do you think? Do you agree? Best fighter of all time. I think I think you know can be the best fighter. I just don't think I'm not in Mexico, by the way, either. But I just feel the I just think I just don't think I could ever see anyone when Chavez was at his best. Mexicans 
I don't know. I can't see anyone, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. I just don't well, think. It, it, it draws yeah, it in America. I mean, it, it draws in America. So Canelo's, a, you know, it, right at the moment, he's on top of his game. His numbers are massive in pay-per-views. Yeah. And he, he gets the money for him. He knows what his market is. I mean, not only do he fights for anything under $40 million, mm. he's one of the biggest prize fighters money-wise the sport's ever produced. At, what is he, 31 yeah. years of age? I mean, you know, Floyd wasn't earning a, a tenth of that at 31 years of age. This oh, guy, yeah. by the time he builds up his profile, I mean, it, it, that's what it is. You build up a fighter's profile to the, the stage where he's got all the followers, he's got all the pay-per-views, but his boxing skills are diminished because they're old. It happens to all of them. But this guy now, hopefully he's built it up now where he's still at his peak and he can still cash in on him because that, yeah. that's the hard part. It's like Mayweather built up to where he was earning a massive money, but... He was he was done by the time he got to that. He was he was old. So, but oh, this yeah. guy right at the moment, yeah, he, he, he's at the peak. I, I feel he's going to be making massive amounts of money. Just on the Chavez Canelo, I think you're you're actually both right. If that makes sense, I think that uh, Tazzy, I think that in Mexico, Canelo is um, sorry Chavez um, is and probably always will be the biggest star. But I think in America that Canelo is the biggest star as far as a Mexican fighter goes. I yeah, so yeah, probably... and I think Canelo's yeah. a, a titles and yeah. unifying divisions. He'll probably could have outdone the shares already. Mm. He's already won more divisions, but I just think, yeah, in Mexico, mate, no one was bigger yeah. than Chavez. When Chavez, don't... Beat, yeah. when Chavez beat Melody Taylor and beat Hector Macho Camacho, mm. I don't but think... No um... one was bigger. Look, it's just my opinion. I don't think you can you can just put all achievements down to just how many titles you've won going up in weight. Not all great fighters need to go up in weight to prove their greatness. And I think Chavez is obviously one of them. There's been so many great fighters that... Well, he still know, won three. Yeah, exactly. Three he did, yeah. But, I mean, you look at fighters you know, like a, you know, a Costa Zoo or those types of guys, you know, the great fighters that won one Triple weight. Triple G's never gone up. Yeah, one weight. So, yeah. They look good on the resume, but I don't think they're the be-all and end-all of just how many weight divisions you've gone, especially in this day and age where you can go through all the four, five, six weight divisions and pick off who you want to who you want to take on. Let's um, let's get to Hearns, uh, Pete, the Hitman. Um, started off as a Motor City Cobra, um, obviously, and then turned into the Hitman when he went to Super Welterweight, 61, 5 and 1, 48 KOs. Most of those losses came later in his career. You can see there he won uh, world titles from welterweight right up to light heavyweight. The first fighter to ever win four world titles, uh, legitimate titles in four different weight divisions. And you can see there, 2012 is inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. So, Pete, what more can you say about the Hitman? My favourite fighter of all time. I just like everything about the Hitman. Each time he got beat, he got Pete dying on his sword, swinging. Yeah. And uh, there's no more charismatic lovable fighter than the hitman and on his night when he's on he beats anyone mm. i mean what he did to roberto duran that was punishing mm. i mean it just when he starts landing that right hand and he gets his range right he's just so hard to beat and mm. he fought all the greats i mean he didn't miss anyone so you've yeah. got to give tommy hearns his, his kudos he fought the best at their best and he was one of the most crowd favorite entertaining fighters of all time he was, and, and uh, Tazzy Pete mentioned the Duran fight, and I must admit, I think I was nine or ten years old at, at the time. Uh, it was probably the, one of the first televised fights I'd ever seen from America, because obviously back then we never got these fights. And I remember watching this, it was a Sunday afternoon, I think it was, and how, and we obviously knew Duran and, you know, obviously Hearns himself, but how electrifying Hearns was in that fight. I don't think I've ever seen a more electrifying fight or knockout ever. I think the way he absolutely dominated Duran and the way he knocked him out, I don't think I've seen anything before or after that, to be honest. Yeah, very true. And um, like that, and that's, that was that light middleweight, which yep. is the weight we're talking about, Canelo. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... like, I mean, everything he'd done, yeah, look, it, it, you know, he almost beat the great Ray Leonard the first fight at Waterweight. We had the rematch of the draw, controversial. Duran, see, the wins over Duran and, and Wilfred Benitez, mm. one of the greatest fighters of all time, three, three um, division world champion, 
Um, they were both at like middleweight. Um, that's what I'm going to get on later on as well, bring that up. Um, he goes up against Haglas, three round war, one of the greatest fights of all time. You know, he, he beats Andres. He, you know, he, he, mate, he's just a freak, mate. Like, yeah. her, this was the go. Well, he always seemed to go back to the gold era of the Fab Four. Somewhere along the line, we bring up a Duran, a Leonard, a Hagler, Hearns. They'll never be yeah. forgotten, these four guys. Mm. They fought each other. It was a golden era of boxing. You know, anytime we talk about one of them, you've got to mention the other. You know, what can we say? Hitman Hearns was built like a freak. He had a great left jab. He had one of the hardest right hands in history. He could box, he could fight, which he showed against a Leonard fight where he done both, the first one. And he could go to the body. Mm. A lot of tall guys can't really find the living. He got left rip. Yeah. He just had it all. And I mean, um, and yeah, look, I, I love I love Hitman. He's one of my favourites of all time. And yeah. And I was blessed to speak to on to the phone. I was with Pierre Karam, my dear brother, as you know, Peter. And and Tommy rang Pierre and I was in the car on speaker. And I said, Oh, good day, Tommy, massive fan and Doug, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And the full fuck. Wow, that's yeah, that's, awesome. that's massive. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pete. Do you think? Um, you know, obviously we 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 put um, Hearns right up there as far as all time greats go. Uh, greats go. But do you think the fact he didn't? But I know he got the Duran fight. Do you think the the two Leonard fights? Obviously, he he lost after being well ahead on points. He was stopped in the fourteenth round. He got robbed, in my opinion, in the draw in the rematch. He didn't beat yeah. Hagler. Do you think? His legacy's diminished a little bit because of that, and, and did the Leonard fights were they the key to him not really being him being rated alongside Le- Leonard and Hagler, especially? It probably put him in a picture of on his night is electrifying, and then he can have a few off nights. Yeah, where obviously the the, the Hagler you know the Hagler fight kind of in three rounds getting blasted out, even though it was the best three rounds of boxing probably in the history of the sport. Mm-hmm. Sort of people weren't expecting that. A lot of people thought Tommy Hearns was going to, you know, beat Hagler in that one. But mm. in the Hearns ones, as you mentioned, especially the first one, everyone thought he was going to beat uh, Leonard and, mm. you know, to get stopped in 14 rounds. But if they were 12 round fights back then, he, he wins comfortably. Bad luck it wasn't. Um, but yeah, kind of, you had to, it's like De La Hoya. Sometimes those rage of thin decisions mm. are eventually going to come back and bite you on the bum when you talk about all-time greats, because you're splitting hairs, because hmm. they're all great. So you've got to start splitting hairs. And if you win those kind of, it's like a race or if you've won three Melbourne Cups, and but he's lost three Melbourne Cups in a photo finish, you think of them differently, even though it's just one centimetre. It's the same with any sport. So, yeah, it does sort of just take away a bit of the gloss. If he had won those fights, he'd probably... Goes down as pound for pound top five in the world. I think Tazzy, especially the second Leonard fight. I mean, you felt bad for him in the first fight. But at the end of the day, Leonard was being the true champion. He was the one that, not necessarily Leonard um, it dug, losing. He dug deep. He um, back, but yeah. the second one, I really felt for him because I think he was so devastated after that first fight. He had his chance at redemption. And in my opinion, it was a close, like I thought rounds wise were pretty close, but he knocked Leonard down twice. I thought that was enough to get him over. And I really felt for him after that. Not that I've been a massive Hearns fans over the year, but I remember watching that fight, feeling broken for him because that should have been his redemption and his tick as being alongside the Leonard and Haglers of the world, I thought. What did you think? Yeah, and, like, and he, mm. he's alongside him anyway, regardless. He, he is, but decision. maybe just, just a slight yeah. run down, I think. Look, look, we, look, I love Tommy. I love the all four. I was mm. more than Leonard, Leonard yeah. than Tommy, though. I'd, I'd say Leonard, Hearns, Duran... Hagler for me was last for me. Oh, is that right? But yeah, for me, just personally, style wise, yep. and it wasn't really, you know, any the bigger, the biggest names you fought with the little guys coming up. Mm. I'm not taking away what yep. he achieved, but I'm just saying. Mm. But like, um, I mean, um, Hearns, you know, look, you know, Leonard, Leonard was just a complete package. Sometimes Tommy's chin let him down with the losses to Barkley and things like that. Um, but look, you know, um, you know Tom, Tommy was, you know, I had him in my top 10 when we done the pound, the pound, or pound for pound. I got Leonard real high. I got Leonard like top three or four. Yeah. Because what he, what he, you know, but 
But look, they're going to come out on top of that whole fabulous four. There's no doubt about it. Um, and it's whoever you want to pick next. I mean, obviously, Hagley was the bigger man, had the wins over Duran Hearns and then Hearns, I guess. But probably Duran's probably last out of them four. But then Duran was known as a lightweight and was the best. He probably rates higher than all them guys pound for pound. Yeah. Except for Leonard. Well, he does. He rates higher than, than, than um, Hearns and Hagley. So, look, them forward is the Mickey Mouse in a golden era of boxing and, um, mm. you know, Tommy's Tommy's name's always going to be, you know, in the archives as one of the all-time greats. Yeah. You know, some might rate him higher, some might rate him less. you gotta, you got to have him there, though. I it think, was amazing. I think just throw a blanket over him and let's not even rate him. I think that just what they were for, for world boxing was, um, was amazing. So, Pete, it's crunch time. Who wins and why? Okay, I'm... I'm thinking packed house mexicans going nuts the americans going nuts i see tommy starting fast i see the crowd behind me. i see tommy the hurricane he starts landing shots on canelo alvarez he's never seen or or weathered before the body and head but canelo's got very good iq he weathers the early storm and by four rounds i've got tommy three rounds in front i've got canelo now starting to come into the fight I think by about Ryan seven or eight, Tommy will get his second win and start coming at Canelo and, and landing some big shots and pushing him back and, and having a lot of hand speed and, and just at six foot one, having that massive reach and I could see the right hand landing and Tommy starting to get on top of Canelo Alvarez. But I, I think Canelo with his heart and tenacity doesn't get stopped. I think he's got the fortitude to, to take Tommy's shots and a few times he might have wobbled and Tommy would have wobbled himself with counters. But I see this going the whole 12 rounds. I see Tommy Hearns winning a unanimous decision. Okay. All right. Tazzy, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, World Super Welterweight title on the line. Who wins and why? Yeah, well, as I said, I, I, I don't my own little... I, one night during COVID, I... I was a bit bored and I I ranked the top three fighters, in my opinion, in every single division of all time. And I had Tommy Hearns as the greatest light middleweight of all time. Even though he had the, only had a couple of the fights here, but he beat Duran and Benitez, two big names. Mm. I had Mike McCullum, number two, behind yeah. Hearns. Good, people, yeah, very people underrated. Should, mm. People should educate on Mike McCullum. Yep. But anyway... Cut long story short, and for reason for that, McCallum beat Curry and mm. Julian Jackson. So, yeah. um, look. Bad um, man, too, McCallum. Mm. Oh, legend. Cronk so Tommy, Friday Tommy, was originally with Cronk. Yeah, I think Tommy, I think Tommy wins this fight. I, I think, like Peter said, I think Canelo has a good enough chin and IQ to, to go to distance. Um, similar, similar to Peter, look, you know, look. Can I have his moments because he's that good? But I think he always suffer, He always tr- had trouble against the, the, the you know, the, the African or Black American fighters and Trout, Lara's a Cuban. Floyd Mayweather schooled him. Uh, Jacobs gave him a bit of trouble. It was a de- that was a decent fight, and a lot a lot of them guys. I mean, and Tommy's just a different level to all of them. I mean, you know, you know Floyd Derek, Floyd's that level, but talking about stylistically, mm. height can box. Jab, right hand. He's 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 a monster. He's a menace to anyone at waterweight, light middleweight. I believe Tommy wins the unanimous decision. Canelo gives a good account of himself because he's such a legend himself. But I think I think Tommy wins pretty comfortably. Okay, so both a unanimous decision as well. Yes. Yeah. See, again, this is me. I don't know. Maybe I should go first from now on because I actually think it might go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Always comes in. I'm so, hey, I've got to, I've got to call it the off. way I see it. Come on, I'm, I think the way I see it going, I think the one thing that Canelo that 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 makes me favour him. I think you're right, Pete. I think Hearn starts quick. Canelo is not really a great starter as well, so it's always going to be dangerous. But the one thing about Canelo, he's got an iron chin. We haven't seen him rocked or put down or even come close to being knocked out. So I think he's got the chin to withstand. Hearns' right hand, 
Uh, and I just think as the fight goes on, Tommy winds down. He starts to get a little bit loose. Um, his legs start to go a little bit. I just think I can just see Canelo getting to that ninth and tenth round and actually knocking Tommy out. Um, oh, no! I, I, hey, hey, it's called an opinion, boys. I just think... Let's not underrate Canelo Mate, a little bit here. Linden, I, I love Tommy. I love Tommy. Don't you get me hate, wrong. You hate the old fighters. No, I, I, I was one of... Hang on. He can't knock out... Fighter. He, can't, he can't knock out Austin Trout. He can't knock out Austin Trout. He's going to knock out Tommy Hoops. Yeah, but you, I don't think you can go by that because some obviously can take the punch a little bit more. And I just think Canelo can punch. And, yeah, let's... I, I understand so Tommy, Trout's... No. Tommy wasn't knocked out by spastics. Hagler and Barkley. I know, but Canelo's no spastic, mate. Canelo is... No, no, the... no, no. I'm saying no. Or, yeah. or well, Love Mourner do went the distance yeah, with, with if he, Canelo Alvarez. Those of you just got knocked out by anyone. I mean, the, mm. the ones that did that stop him in his prime yeah. are yeah. legends, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah, look... I think you can make a case. You can look at every great fighter in history, compare them against each other, and look, he struggled with him, and he really shouldn't have, and he didn't stop him, and he knocked him out. And he, I don't think you can really go by that, because as we always say, styles make fights. So I'm real, putting a line through that. I'm talking Canelo versus Hearns. I can just see... I love Canelo. I, 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 love, I love them both. And Tommy Hearns, Tommy I loved Hearns, Hearns as well. Not... I loved all the four of them. I could just see, though, Canelo... Tommy I think Hearns he... is no Billy Joe Saunders, put it Yeah, I, I, you had your time. I'm... I'm uh, let me know my opinion. I just think Canelo, he's got the he's got underrated defence. He's very slick. He can slip punches, very good timing. I just think as if he can get past the first three or four rounds, which I think he's got more than enough of chin to get through, I, I think. I think as the fight goes on, uh, Canelo gets stronger. Tommy tends to wind down a little bit after the fourth or fifth round. I just think ninth or tenth round, Tommy, um, Canelo knocks him out. That's just my opinion. So, okay. So, um yeah, so I'm sure you know, we'll get feedback from everyone out there. I don't do this deliberately, guys, I assure you. And next week, I think I'll go first. Um, so I don't look like I'm just going against you guys. But don't get me wrong. I, thought, yeah, I actually, love Tommy Let's Hearns. do that. Let's do that. Yeah, I love Tommy. He was a great fighter. And as I said before, his fight against Duran was the most scintillating and electric performance I think I've ever seen. The way he just obliterated a legend of the sport. Just wiped the floor with him. You very rarely see that. So I was a fan. But... Canelo, I just think, cut from that cloth that the, the fabulous four were cut from. And I just think he can he can do it. So so anyway, we'll see you next week, I suppose, in the poll. And we'll see, actually, we'll see what yeah, Mike has to say as well. I'm looking forward to having him back to, to add another. Yeah, well, the poll will probably be newcomers anyway. So they'll probably go, fucking Canelo. <laughs> no, I think Hearns has got a lot of fans out there. I think most, I think, was it last time? I think it might have maybe more ticked Hearns over Mayweather. Because I think, uh, I think. I don't know. I don't know, Peter. <laughs> well, you know, hey. Oh, hey. That's why it's good to have this debate. That's what we're doing for. And, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, that's uh, that's just the opinion. So, next week, as we said at the start, Mike Altamura's back. So, we're going to let him pick the dream fight. Uh, I'll be really interested to see what he has to say. And very quickly, I'm going to get him to go over all the ones he's missed and just give us a quick winner out of all of them just so we can get up. Oh, that's up a good idea. That's a good idea. You know, we don't need the full detail, just who wins and why. So that might be an episode in itself, I think, because he's probably missed about 10 shows. So I'll give, I'll I'd give like to ask him. He's got to be of an accent. Okay, an African accent. Yeah. Think African accent, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Pete, go ahead, mate. No, I was going to ask him about his opinion on Costa Team Zoo versus Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, well. I'd like to know Mike's opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. There's, I'll go it, sounds a bit like, it sounds a bit like the old Desmond Tutu. Is that what he sounds like, is it? Yeah, he sounds like Desmond Tutu, yeah. Nah, it'd be great to have him back. And uh, Mike, if you're watching, I um, hope you've had a great time over in Africa because it's time to get back to work and put your opinion in. And so these guys can't gang up on me when uh, my opinion's wrong, uh, you know, different to these guys. So. I, I don't think I've ever felt <laughs> so close to Petty Manny Artist ever in my life. <laughs> you guys have got this little bond thing going on at the moment, haven't you? Yeah. No, no, we need the quiz to, to separate this and all away, Tazzy. We need to get the quiz back. Said, Stick on me, son. I'm a movie star in this town. <laughs> and here goes in 04. I've never, I've never felt as close as I do tonight. I reckon we might have to get you no, two thanks, guys in, a, in an exhibition on the next Kama KO show, I reckon. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still going to kick your ass in the quiz, though, Peter. Yeah, let's see Thursday. We've got Thursday. It's going to be a ripper quiz. Lyndon, I hope you get all the questions ready. Yeah, no, they're all ready to go, mate. We've got a lot to get through on Thursday, so make sure you join in. And 
if you lo- if you watch a show, make sure you like, subscribe, share all those that stuff you're supposed to do. And um, you know, we're growing, but uh, we really want to get the word out there and get more input. We want a lot more requests from uh, from you guys out there watching as well, because. Uh, yeah, you know, this was from, I think, Nathan Mitchell, I think I said was his name. So thanks, Nathan, for... The, thanks, uh, the Nathan. Input. And uh, let's let's hear him. It's not an alias. It's not Jade Mitchell, is it? No, oh, it could Gunners be Nathan. Jade Mitchell. It could He's, be. Um, <laughs> is there anything to get a mention? Shout, shout, out, <laughs> shout out to my old mate, Big Billy Hack in Tassie, our number one fan. Thanks, Big Billy. Billy yeah, good one, Billy. Thanks for your support. All right, boys. Canelo, Canelo. I'll see you next week. <laughs> get out of here. See you, guys. See you, boys.